calendars are practiced in spaces that are sacred, that are holy, used for war, for rituals of initiation, for ways in which one presses us oneself against another, like metal sharpening metal, a way of releasing, a way of gathering. It's a whole pedagogy, a whole way of living. Once they were referred to as calendar secret societies, spaces where information, ancient, arcane and old, would be passed on generation to generation. Wow. The calendar are these arts of self-defense, conflict resolution, tactics. This practice creates states of being and ways of growing and learning. But the text is the wood and the body of the other person and the knowledge and the dialectic is all physical, right? When we argue in Kalinda, it's war against war and our punctuations are drawn in pains, yelps and blood. So that for me is what is Kalinda. Why would I tell you of our cross, our circle, how we engage in space, how we understand that the circle is the beginning that never ends and the ending that always is beginning. Why would I explain to those who do not understand and have not put in time into our cultural practice the ability to cross from this world into the next, the Kalunga, to access the wisdom, power and strength, the very primordial energy of our world, the end to itself, that which makes us all alive. Why would I explain the ways in which we gather this power into ourselves to access our greatest and best self, to expand our genetic memory so that we may download all of the wisdom of the ancients, especially in matters of stress, urgency and danger. How we use amulets, which are psychotechnologies that are guided and developed in a way to allow us to find ourselves in space. Ways to go and ways to come back. You know, spiritual compasses, if you will. Why would I tell those who did not understand our people's power, who thought it was simply black magic, that we create special vials of liquids that are quite unique because of our understanding of herbs and plants, our ability to use biochemistry to enhance, to heal, to alter our spirits. What we do is very careful understanding of the physical sciences of nature, space and time, and ways in which the human mind functions, ways in which we can enhance that. I'll tell you why I would give you all an insight into the mysticism, magic and power of Kalinda. Because the elders in Moruga designated this as the moment which the Black Atlantic diaspora needs to reaccess their technology for their survival. So all of all you who have some deep connection to this space, Please find the elders in your villages, communities. Go back to the drum. Go back to the sciences of herb and health. And use them to construct a way forward. The drum, the drum. The drum in my head and I'm balling. The drum, the drum. Oh, Lord Lionel. The drum, the drum. The first drum a human being ever hears is the heartbeat of the mother. As you sit in the guile of the womb, you are called into space and enter into this new world to the musical score of your mother's heartbeat. The drumming calendar is the galloping horse. Can you imagine being in a guile and having your instructor be able to curate your experience, guide you to step forward, dodge to the left, cut the man or breaks all off of an instrument that is intuitively processed that doesn't need to be analyzed but it's felt and allows its expression to be immediate i wonder what sports teams would do if they knew that this technology existed and that the coaches and the athletes all could be in a different level of communion it's almost like watching a flock of birds in flight Perfectly synchronized, shifting and spiraling and swirling through space. The bird in the front door to ask the bird in the back, fellas, be turning left. Because they understand the power of the drum. The drum in my head. 
and are boiling. The drum, the drum. Ah, Megaya! Ah, Megaya! Ah, Megaya! What is my Gaia? Gael. Obviously, comes from the Latin phrase Gaeria, which is designed or designated as the pit in which cocks fight. But this speaks throughout all the martial traditions in the Black Atlantic world of circle, rings, hoarders. These rings are always perceived to be crosswords, crossroads, portals, junctions, spaces where we can enter and spaces where things can come into play. What is a gael? A gael is a musical construct. The voices of the village, the opponents, the drums, the chant well, the lead singer, curator, he who guides and points. Creating this fusion space, the space that is timeless, is not bound by earth, the geographies, this space, the space that allows us to travel all the way to the ancient past or go to a future that we have yet to see. For us, that is what a dial is, a space of intersection, a space of promise, a space of opportunity, a space where options can be studied, practiced, discarded. A dial is like to a scientist, a lab, to a musician, it would be a conference hall without an audience, for the audience is part of the band. A guy is much more than what most people have experienced because it is actively one fluid community engaging in an act together through the black man, through the drummers, through the space. A guy is home, a guy is family, a guy is a house with outdoors. A guy is special. To David Matthew Brown, this was his soul. To King Carl Swamba, his rifle or his gun. To some of the elders, a sword. Kalinda Bois is a space of possibilities, a space in which embodiment leaves the physical self and is practiced in an object that is alive. When you play in stick, there's no difference between your fingernail and the stick itself. The sensitivity that one is able to acquire, the feeling of traveling at speeds beyond light is enabled by the stick. A calendar boy is a sacred object, not to be toyed with, not to be played with. Most stickmen I know are buried with a stick because they are the stick. Made from pui, guava, and array, dark moon, paid for with blood and your whole soul. Not something to be treated lightly or carelessly. Something that is fable to be mounted, to be able to be imbued with energetics and spirits and power. A talisman, that which we carry, that which carries all our wonder, all our understanding and philosophy, all our science and that which science can process. Bois. When I do my research on Kalinda, Kalinda existed in Congo Square in Louisiana and Kalinda existed in Venezuela. In Cuba they speak of one of the source musics of dance on being Kalinda. In Puerto Rico they speak of Kalinda as being part of Bomba. In Dominican Republic and Haiti, Palo or Masundi. Grenada, St. Lucia, Curacao, Kalinda, Stick Priest, Bambula. Our tradition is Caribbean wide, as are we. Who in this Caribbean ever was trapped in one territory? 
the narratives that we didn't travel and we didn't explore and we didn't expand and we didn't move from island to island have created for us this idea that we are nationals. Colinden Trinidad has been in Barbados, has been in Grenada, has been in St. Lucia, as well as they have been here. So though at presently I practice Kalenda and I'm from the Maruga tradition of Kalenda, I find it very difficult to isolate myself simply to this space. Knowing full well every time I sing I love we I love we like my aro, my oh, my aro, me pidi bwamwe. My aro, play we pumwe. My aro, ele pumwe. My aro, my oh, my aro, me pidi bwamwe. It's sung in, a, sung in a French patois that is no longer spoken in Trinidad, but is more deeply connected to the patois spoken in Martinique and Guadeloupe. So, what are we? Calenderos, those who practice calendar are Caribbeans. I am fortunate to be a child of an organization known as Bo Academy. Bo Academy was the dream of the elders in Maruga. Mother Marian, Mother Marva, King Stokely, King David, King Kali, King Congo Barra, Nolan Cummings. These were the people that formed the Bo Academy and imbued upon its leadership and mission. And the mission was fourfold. First, we had to become the living embodiment of this form. It's healing herbs and plants. It's understanding of the traditions, history, music, drum construction, stick making, self-defense, the artistry and way of living. To take that, become it so then we could disperse it. One of the greatest ways we have to protect our forms is to make sure it's spread wide and far. So that if something happens in one region, it's still available in others. Like a seed. You don't throw all the seeds in one pot, you have to spread it around. After we dispersed it, we have to propagate it in its original honorific form. To seek the purest transmission possible. So that those who it spread among have a chance to experience Kalinda in its fullness. No, I'm not talking about that best village thing people has been doing. About these, these diminished, crushed, small down spaces in plays and theater in our region. No, no. We're talking about the kings and queens, the fermenters of revolution, those who brought joy and happiness, those who were the leaders and protectors of their villages. That calendar. So after we decided to become it, to spread it, and to make sure it's shared in its original form, the last task was to archive it, to collect as much of the past as we can to allow those who want to create a new way forward with it to have access to it. Because fundamentally, calendars are psychotechnology. It's a way of entering and being in space, a way of understanding strategy, a way of resolving conflict. The Japanese understand this because they make sure all of their citizens study martial traditions. Not so that they become a martial society, but that they become a civilized society that has tools and resources to deal with the hard moments, the sticky places. We then brought down one of the foremost researchers in Capoeira Angola and Black Atlantic martial arts. His name is Cobra Manta, my mystery and teacher. And he tasked us with a fifth mission. And the fifth mission was to ensure that we honor while alive the elders who kept it alive. This, this great African tradition of honoring elders, of making space for advisors, of understanding the generation that sacrificed in order for us to have, must be recognized in their living lifetimes. So these were the first five mandates, and now we have a sixth mandate. And this came about because of the joining of the Academy of one Jamie Filbert. Her desire for us to take this knowledge and find a future for it, find spaces in which it could be propagated in ways that are new, that solve problems now, that are about futurisms to come. So I think these are the six tenants of the academy and these six tenants have produced nine yards, areas of study. We study combat, we study performance arts, we study theater, we study what we call the Yard Academy, where we collect 
writing, research, and thought on calendar and allow it to be dispersed in ac academia. We have a survival yard where we teach the old skills of hunting, fishing, how to live in nature without technology. Then we have the yard archive, a space where we use film, modern technology, social media to gather and to share this information as richly as we can across the world. We have the healing herbs and plants yard where we pass on the traditions of rubbing, which is massage, pulling, alignment, what plants could heal and help, ways to live. Then we have a wisdom school, a space where we bring elders and young people together in conversation, in discussion, to dismantle, to deconstruct and build thought in a way that is aligned with the very philosophical construct that is Kalinda. And the last space is how we use Kalinda to aid in the expression, the expression of art, be it writing, be it visual arts, be it the construction of music, modern and traditional. So these are the areas in which we have dedicated our energy and focus, ways in which we find futures, ways in which we connect the new generations to the past. That is the Bar Academy.